evening, everyone. Um, welcome to Arena of Schalke and the Match Day Minus One press conference with England coach Gareth Southgate and captain Harry Kane. Um, can I please remind you to keep your phones silent, um, raise your hand before asking a question and wait for the microphone, and questions to be asked in one of the interpretive languages, so today Serbian, German or English. Introduce yourselves, please, and your media outlet. And I think we can now begin with uh, Sky. Yes. Uh, Carve Solakal from Sky Sports News. Uh, just a question for Gareth. Uh, Gareth, Serbia are a very talented but unpredictable side. What kind of challenge are you expecting from them tomorrow night? Very tough. Um, they have good individual players, fantastic collective spirit, um, dangerous forwards. So uh, we know that this is a really difficult opening game for us, and we've got to be uh, we've got to play at our very best to to win the game. Yeah, lady, second row. Thank you, Harry. I'm in Russia ahead of the World Cup. You announced that you were going for the Golden Boot. Uh, you have the Golden Boot. Does it mean as much this year when there's so much goal scoring talent in your team? Is it? Does it fade into the shadows of actually winning this competition? And how hard was it to sit on the bench at Bayern Munich at the end of the season? How much are you raring to go? In German, please, Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course. I'm, uh, no, I'm really looking forward to, to this tournament, I think. Um, yeah, I think back in 2018, of course, the Golden Boot was a, an amazing achievement. But as always, you know, that's a, co a consequence of hopefully winning games and, and trying to win the... The Europe, European Championship is what we're trying to do. If, if I win the, the Golden Boot along the way, then fantastic. And it means I'm obviously helping my team. But, um, yeah, we have some great goal scorers in the team, players who are, are definitely on form, who've had fantastic seasons. So uh, now it's about taking that into, into this major tournament. So uh, we're just excited to get going tomorrow. Poštovanje, Vladimir Tomković, Dnevne novine i portal Informer iz Beograda. Ako može po jedno kratko pitanje za obojicu, za gospodina Southgate-a, vi i ja smo kratko razgovarali pre šest meseci posle žreba u Hamburgu i tad ste mi rekli da ćete možda pozvati vašeg bivšeg saigrača Savo Miloševića da vam otkrije neki detalj u vezi sa... We've lost the interpretation. Apologies. So can you please repeat the question? No, it's not it's not translating. Maybe can we can we move to an English question and then we'll try and fix it? Yeah? Arilas from TV2 Norway, question for Gareth Southgate. Uh, I read in The Guardian that they said you're entering the age of unreason where uh, you can't win even if you win. They called it the uh, Gareth conundrum. Uh, fail to win the Euros and you'll be cast as a fraud. Win and you'll be jeered for not winning more. How do you reflect on, on that and how you're perceived yourself in, in England? Well, I'd rather win and give that bit a go. Um, yeah, I... I I've been in the job for eight years, so I understand the landscape. Um, everybody that's been in the job has experienced the same thing, and um, I, I'm just, I just try now to prepare the team in the best possible way, and um, we're really looking forward to the beginning of the tournament. Uh, so they're fixing the interpretation system. So for the moment, we just keep the questions in English. Yeah. Uh, Olof Lund, Team 4 Sweden. Question for Harry about winning. Uh, there's been a lot about talk about winning titles, not in Bayern Munich, now with England. What would it mean for you to win something finally and hopefully with England? Yeah, it would mean a lot. You know, uh, I love playing for my country. I love playing for England. Uh, yeah, it means the world to me every time I step out onto the pitch wearing the shirt. So uh, I think to win a major tournament with England would be, you know, uh, one of the pinnacles of, of anyone's career. So, um, yeah, that's the aim, you know. Uh, for me personally, obviously the trophies ha haven't quite happened yet. But, 
you know, it just makes me more determined and more hungry to, to go out there and do that. And that starts with, you know, this summer, we have a, a good opportunity. We have a lot of hard work in front of us. Um, but yeah, that opportunity is there and, and you know, I'm looking forward to, to trying to make it happen. Yeah, BBC Sport. Um, Andy Swiss, BBC News. Um, Gareth, you'll be aware that England are among the favourites for the Euros. A lot of people are tipping them. How confident are you that your players can deal with that expectation? And, and how excited are you to be leading them into this competition? Well, hugely excited. To lead your country into a major tournament is an amazing honour. Great privilege. So, for me, that's... Um, just as exciting as it was ahead of Russia, if not more so. Um, yeah, in terms of our standing, I think you've already seen Germany play the way they did last night, Spain in the first half today. There are a lot of good teams in this tournament and we have to be exceptional uh, to progress firstly through the group uh, and then uh, the opportunity to go further. So our focus is on qualifying from the group. You have to, um, when you're trying to achieve um, exceptional things, you have to break it down into manageable chunks and the, the first priority is get, get out of the group and then, and then work from there. Hi, Henry Winter, World Soccer. Um, Harry, we always ask this going into a tournament, what's the ball like? Is it flighty? Have you had a chance to sort of work with it at length? Yeah, I mean, I like the ball. I think it's uh, a good ball for strikers. It's quick. Um, yeah, when you strike it, it stays hit. So, um, yeah, obviously I've had a bit of a different experience with a different ball in the Bundesliga. Um, the Adidas ball we're used to in in, uh, in Europe, and, and obviously I played with the Nike ball in the, in the Premier League. But, um, yeah, for me personally, I think it's better for the, the strikers or the, the goal scorers than it is for the, for the goalkeepers. So uh, I'm not going to complain about that. Uh, so Serbian is now working, so we can go back. <laughs> yeah, to the back row. Thank you very much, my second try, Vladimir Novković, from the Porto Informer from Belgrade. Does interpreting function right now? I will address two brief questions for Mr. Southgate. Uh, we have spoken three months ago briefly after Hamburg and you've said that you will call your former co-player Sava Milosevic to give you some details about the Serbian team. Have you done that? What has he told you? And for Mr. Kane, the players very often before very important matches, they say that in their heads they develop various films and various scenarios, if you can say so. In which scenario will you def be defeated from Serbia and how are, we gonna, how are you going to react to that? Or is defeat from Serbia something that you haven't thought of? Um, no, I don't think you, you look that far ahead. Of course, we want to win the game tomorrow evening. Um, but in the game of football, anything can happen. There can be highs, there can be lows throughout the, the 90 minutes. And, and that's what you have to prepare for. Of course, uh, we want to have a, a, a fantastic game. and. Uh, play in the, in the style that we want to play and, and without the ball be um, aggressive and uh, how we've been over the years but um, yeah as we've all seen in football anything can happen so we just have to prepare for everything and hopefully we can go out there tomorrow night and, and show a good side to ourselves Sorry, yeah. I had a question yeah. um, <laughs> yes I, I haven't spoken with Savo um, we're, we're very good friends, but I wouldn't put him in a position where uh, he had to betray, betray his country. So, um, yeah, it, it, he, uh, I'm, I'm sure he wouldn't be giving me any inside information about the team. Hello, David Kinellato with uh, Gazette in Italy. Question for, uh, for Harry. Um, Harry, England is seen as the favourite to win it all. Do you feel the pressure to win? Do you feel your fans at home saying it's coming home and, you know, all the expectations you have? No, I think, you know, every tournament poses different expectations. I think, you know, we've earned the right to be, uh, I guess, classed as one of the favourites, but we look at ourselves in, you know, in, in individually and as a team. And uh, going into this tournament, we know, you know, in, in past tournaments, we've done a lot of things well and we've made 
you know, the country proud and we've had good tournaments, but ultimately we're, we're here to win it and there will be nothing better for, for us and the nation itself if we, if we do that. But, um, yeah, like the, the boss said earlier, there's a lot of top, top teams. Uh, first and foremost is our focus tomorrow night and obviously the, groups, uh, the group stage. And then from there, you know, we, we know how tough it was to get to the final a few years ago um, and we're going to have to do that and even more if we, if we want to achieve that and hopefully one step further this, uh, this year. James Robson, Associated Press. Hi, Gareth. Um, you've seen a lot of players, England players, over the years who've been built up. Uh, I wonder what you think about the sort of expectations that are being placed on Jude Bellingham. He's just done a, an advert that adds to the hype. Um, uh, uh, Dragon Stojkovic just said that he thinks he'll be a, a golden ball winner in the future as well. I, I just wonder, are you concerned about that or given how he behaves, how he's acted with Real Madrid, is he just on, on a bit of a different level where... It just won't get to him. Uh, well, from my perspective, he's a young player and um, one of you know a number of very important players in the team. So um, we shouldn't be expecting him to carry the load for for the rest of the team. Um, I think in this team that load is spread. He has a fantastic mindset. He has a tremendous drive and uh, ability to affect big games um, and yeah he, he has coped with everything incredibly well at such a young age um, coming into our squad playing in a World Cup moving to the biggest club in the world um, you know he's adapted to all of those things um, I'm sure not all of that has been straightforward and um, but you know outwardly he copes with that brilliantly and yeah, all I would say is that we have a responsibility as a team for all of our players. We're a collective. We'll, we'll succeed if everybody plays their part, the whole squad. Um, so it's great to have some talented players that we that we have, um, but um, the onus is on everybody to do their part. Uh, I will speak in Serbian. <coughs> Dušan Ustević from Portal Telegraph. I would like to know if you consider that Serbia will start with two strikers tomorrow, as normally with Vlahovic and Mitrovic, or do you think that the main coach of Serbia will choose a more defensive approach and choose some of the best strikers, but also increase the defense and the middle? Yes, it's, it's difficult to, uh, to be 100% certain. Um, um, Dragon has different options. We're aware they can play in different systems, and um, we know that the strikers they have can cause problems to any team. So um, I think they, they clearly have a settled way of playing. There are clear strengths to the team. Um, we have to be able to deal with all of those strengths uh, and also try to exploit um, the weaknesses which of course every team in the tournament has some weaknesses so that's that's the that's the role of our uh, our work during the week really hi Eric Peters Bill Germany question for Harry so Gareth revealed that he's learning German so can you <laughs> teach him anything uh, I don't think I can teach him anything. I can uh, tell him it's going to be difficult to learn for sure. Um, but yeah, no, I'm, I wish him all the best because uh, it's not easy. And obviously, I've been doing it for a little while now. And, and um, yeah, of course, still finding it tough. But uh, yeah, hopefully, maybe next season we can uh, exchange a few words to each other in German. Maybe another one. How impressed um, were you with the German team uh, yesterday? And so both strikers scored. Um, who you prefer to watch, Harvards or Phil Krug? Um, well, that's not, that's not my decision, uh, thankfully. Uh, no, obviously, they had a fantastic game. Uh, I've got a lot of teammates playing uh, in that team, and, um, yeah, I'm sure they're obviously delighted with uh, their, their start to the tournament, and, uh, yeah, they've got some fantastic players. So, um, yeah, I wish them all the best, but, of course, my focus is on England, and, 
uh, our game uh, tomorrow night against Serbia. One more question in Serbian, please. Greetings to everyone. Dragan Cicca from Sports Club Belgrade, from for the head coach Southgate. Mr. Stojkovic said that his team will be attacking England. Would that be a surprise for you if that's going to be so? And for Mr. Kane, what do you see as the greatest quality of this current Serbian team? Thank you. I think, like the boss said earlier, I think they have a lot of good qualities. I think some great attacking players who are known to be goal scorers around uh, their clubs. So, um, yeah, they pose uh, a lot of threats. And I think without the ball, um, we expect an aggressive team, a team who uh, defend really well. So, um, yeah, I think, you know, we're expecting a really tough game tomorrow night. And like the boss said, if we don't quite get it right, we can be in for, for a really uh, tough game. So, um yeah, we'll focus on ourselves as, as we always do, but of course we know uh, that Serbia pose uh, a lot of good threats as well. Yeah, and it wouldn't surprise me for Serbia to attack. They get um, numbers up the pitch quickly and they can break quickly. They get the ball forward quickly at times. They, they of course, can build up in a more patient way as well, so they have a nice mix to their game. Um, but no, I don't expect them to sit and defend all night. I don't think that would be uh, would be the way that the coach wasn't the way he played, and um, I wouldn't expect it to be the way he is as a, as a coach. Hi, both James Ollie from ESPN. Um, just two, if I can, quickly, Gareth. Is everyone available tomorrow, team-wise? Everyone's available. Um, we have a decision whether we. Whether we whether Luke is um, possible to use from the bench or not, um, but everybody has trained today and uh, yeah and, and is available. Thank you. And um, there's been a lot of talk about potential security issues around this game. It's been deemed a high risk fixture. Um, what what's your message to supporters coming here tomorrow? I expect everybody to enjoy the football. It's uh, I've been fortunate to be involved in a lot of tournaments um, and travelled to other tournaments that I wasn't directly involved in. They're great carnivals of football, opportunity to see another part of the world, meet people from other parts of the world, um, have a brilliant time. So, yeah, everybody, uh, I'm sure, is coming to, to do exactly that. It's, uh, the whole of Europe can come together and celebrate together the brilliant game that we're involved in and um, support their team um, and get behind their team, but of course meet, meet other people and have a fantastic uh, month together. Thank you. It's fine, yeah. If the mic is here, it's easier. <laughs> Simon Peach from PA. Just a question, Gareth. Obviously, there's a very exciting time at the moment, but there's been some tragic news today that Millwall goalkeeper Matthias Sarkic has died and Kevin Campbell's passed away. So with Kevin, just your reflections and memories of, I guess, coming up against him quite a lot and things like that and just overall your take. Yeah, well, I know that some of our players and staff um, actually played and worked with Matthias as well. So um, that, that both, both um, pieces of news were received with... You know, shock and um, great sadness. Um, yeah, so clearly those boys that played played with him uh, f are feeling that even more. Um, yeah, Kevin is the same age as me. I remember him being in Arsenal's youth team similar time uh, and uh, playing against him in reserve team football. And then, of course, you play against each other so often over the years. Hugely popular man. Um, his son's also been in our junior pathway as well. So, yeah, our, our thoughts are very much with his family at this time. And I think um, some of the tributes have been fabulous. You know, clearly people who knew him better than I did talking about what an amazing character. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's a very, very sad day.
Vegard Augsta, VG Norway. Question for uh, Harry. Uh, Jude Bellingham mentioned earlier here, great season in terms of goal scoring as yourself. Um, how do you work with him? Can you give us a little bit of insight in what's happening in the opponent's box and around? Uh, are you bossing him around, telling him where to go, or how do you work together to make yourselves even more dangerous together? Yeah, I think we do that in the train on the training pitch. You know, we try and uh, yeah, be in scenarios that will be in the game, uh, whether that's you know on the halfway line with the movements that we make, or in the opposition box. You know, all over the pitch. I think, uh, of course, Drew's a, a fantastic player, and he has a, a really good brain in terms of his movement and uh, the spaces that he sees. And um, yeah, I think we complement e each other really well, whether one of us is dropping deep, the other one running in behind and, and vice versa. So, uh, yeah, a, an amazing player to play with. Um, he likes to get in the box, he likes to affect games and score goals, which is always important for an attacking midfielder. So, um, yeah, I think the more we train with each other, the more we play with each other, hopefully that relationship can get even stronger, but uh, it feels strong uh, already. Question for Gareth. Um, you obviously have a lot of difficult decisions to make ahead of a game like this. How much do you listen to your players? How involved are they in the decision making? Um, well, I, I think we have a very open relationship with all of the players. Um, we've actually put a small leadership group together for this tournament now with Harry, Kyle Walker, Declan Rice, Jude Bellingham. Um, because there's a different dynamic to this group. There's a lot of younger players, and I want to make sure that the voices of the younger players are that I'm really in touch with that as well. Um, so, you know, I don't want to leave here with any stone unturned. I don't want to have missed anything. And um, it's always important to know what the players are thinking. They have good views, they have good experiences. Um, and also, there will be some decisions that I will take without talking to any of them. Um, hello, I'm Pierre from uh, L'Equipe. Just a question for Gareth. Um, it could be potentially maybe your last tournament as England manager. Does it change anything on the way you prepare this competition and does it add more pressure on your shoulders or not? Thank you. Well, I hate to put pressure on all the coaches, but it could be the last tournament for all of them. So this is the world we're in. Um, I'm probably more relaxed about it because I've been to three. I know exactly what it involves. I know the events you have to deal with, the path you have to navigate. Um, and I'm very fortunate to have very good players with a great um, spirit, great staff that work with me throughout. Um, so we're really looking forward to that challenge. and. Um, uh, I guess you're even more determined to to make sure that we don't miss anything, as I said earlier, and that um, we're giving ourselves the very best chance of winning. Hi, Stepan Maric, uh, BBC Serbia. Uh, a question for both of you. Uh, could we get a couple of sentences about Tadic and Mitrovic? They've played... Uh, for years in the Premier League, they've left some of the legacy there. So, what do you see? Is there uh, is there a strong signs, uh, and how do you plan to to stop them? Thank you. Yeah, no, I think uh, really good, really good, good players. I think Mitrovic is obviously a, a a goal scorer. He's proven that throughout his whole career for both club and. And for country, uh, so yeah, obviously as a as a striker myself, you appreciate uh, other strikers who who score a lot of goals. Uh, and with Tadic, yeah, a fantastic player, technically really gifted, um, can hurt you with the final pass, the final cross, and obviously the finish as well. So um, yeah, two players that we're obviously aware of and we know uh, could pose uh, big threats to Monaco. Yeah. I, I not much more I can add, really. Tadic is obviously, we've followed him in England, but also at Ajax, and he, he was in the team that Spurs played uh, in that um, that famous game. So he, um, yeah, very good te technical player. 
Um, with Mitrovic, I think he he really knows his craft. He um, he knows the areas of the pitch that he's particularly dangerous, um, and yeah, he's he's exceptional at pulling off defenders, uh, taking chances in the air, um, holds the play up well. So uh, he's he's a, an outstanding goal scorer, but. They're not the only two players in the Serbian team that we have to make sure that we're, we're ready to deal with. They have some excellent players right across the pitch. And uh, the last question, I think. Uh, Paul Joyce, please. Paul Joyce, the Times. Gareth, um, due to elevation into that leadership group, season feels a very natural step. What, what do you expect from him when, when you're speaking to him about that? What, what's, what does the role entail? Um, well, I want the opinions of the four boys, but also um, they're, they're involved with different um, different age groups in the squad, so they'll be able to pick up what's going on with the different areas of the squad. We've got 26. It's it's not easy to, to keep track of how everybody is every day. Um, and I think you, you want to open up that dialogue. Sometimes with younger players, they're... They're normally going to be a little bit more reluctant, perhaps, to approach the head coach or manager and uh, and talk about what they're thinking. So you want you want a sense check of what's going on on the ground. And I think for those two boys, their leaders, um, the team is taking on or the squad has taken on a younger dynamic, um, and so important that they start to embrace more responsibility in those areas. Um, it shouldn't just be for the older players to lead. A lot of our younger players have a lot of caps and uh, a lot of good uh, big match experience. So I could have put more into the group, but I think four is enough. And um, um, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll meet regularly and um, and feedback on everything basically. Okay. Thank you very well, much. You are old. That's <laughs> <laughs> better, my friend. <laughs> Can I just let Thank you know you're not that as old as me, obviously. <laughs> the the media hub will be open today until ten thirty, and then we'll open again tomorrow at four o'clock. Thank you. Thank you.